it's a glimpse into the center of the earth. It's like listening to the heartbeat of the planet. The physiological effects of being inside the volcano are significant in that you have every force down there trying to kill you. All right, so let's, let's use the drone to... I wanted to share the Marum Crater uh, that's located in the island nation of Vanuatu by bringing a team with me and documenting this place in a way that's never been seen. The drone that we used is called the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. We had also GoPros mounted onto these particular drones with gimbaled devices so that no matter how much they shook, the video remained stable. We were able to take a series of thousands of photographs around the top of the crater and then process those using a specialized software to render the first of its kind 3D model of the volcano from inside. We were fortunate in that we got the footage we were looking for and unfortunate in the fact that we lost our drones. They uh, fell to their demise, some into the lava and others just from the incredible amount of heat uh, and unstable air. You have sulfur dioxide and toxic gases that are superheated and just an incredible radiant heat that exceeds 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit standing right next to it. Well, if you're looking for extreme locations, it doesn't get much better than an erupting volcano on Vanuatu. We are there to investigate how quickly microbial colonization happens on rocks. We certainly wouldn't imagine that there is life in the lava lake itself, just way too hot for anything to happen. But the instant the rock cools to below about 120 degrees Celsius, it's considered a habitable environment. Getting a handle on how microbes can colonize this particular substrate is a good example of what will happen across the planet and has happened across the planet throughout geologic time. Having the cameras everywhere, particularly during the sampling at the very edge of the lava lake, is critical because we can go back and see exactly how far we were from the edge, exactly how closely distributed these newly formed rocks were. This isn't something you can measure in the moment. 3D reconstruction of the crater itself will be very useful and figuring out which layers are iron rich, which layers are sulfur rich. Within the caldera as a whole, there's certainly life. Coating the walls as you go down on some of the surfaces down at the bottom, almost certainly there's a high microbial constituency. The greatest scientific value is just having videographic support that can be used in tandem with other research that's happening in the world. I really believe there's an opportunity to merge those worlds of exploration and tech and then coming back and reporting on all kinds of information that has not yet been discovered.